This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Find out how to get a free trial at the end of the video. Welcome back for another episode of working on our lovely German Bernsdorfer power hammer and getting it up and running. As you remember from the last episode, we need to make a base to lift it up as it's a two-piece design. I must apologize for how long it's been since the last upload on this project, but there's been a few hiccups. You remember in the last episode, I texted my dealer to order steel. Well, it was the wrong dealer. Uh... Not today. So I texted my other dealer, and when he arrived, he must have been on a different measurement uh, system or something, because the steel was too small. So at last, I picked up the phone, I called an actual steel supplier, and this got delivered. So let's drag it inside and get working. Man, I feel like a woman. So here's our plan with the steel. We have 8P for pipes, a top plate, a bottom plate, and the top plate will be welded to the pipe, which is also welded to the bottom plate. There'll be a hole for the anvil and a whole bunch of holes to not only mount the power hammer to the base, but also mount the base to the concrete. And holes are our next step. That'll do perfect. That didn't go very well. I'm not very good at this. You know, I'm really awful at plasma cutting. How has my torch ended up so completely wrecked? I've cut off bits of my torch components. I've made very bad holes. <laughs> if it wasn't for that camera and those headphones around your neck, this was immediately going to be all over you. I've decided plasma cutting sucks. So we're going to drill the rest of our holes with an annual cutter. You can only use it once a year. The great thing about using a mag drill to cut these holes is it enables us to be kinder to our local habitats and provide nesting opportunities for local birds. Next step, we need to cut out this big hole for the anvil to poke through. No! I ran out of pen. I'm in chalk. I think lipstick's gonna be my new metal marking medium. This is working amazingly. Before we get to cutting, we should probably uh, do something about this nasty torch. We're gonna replace these bits of wire with this thing. Looks a little more meaty and we should probably Change tips. Oh, okay, we'll shove a new tip in. We'll see how this works. So fingers crossed, we can use the gantry crane to lift this up onto the base, and that'll then sit there. Oh, crap! Oh. Oh. Hey, Jamie! Oh, no! It's hanging off the edge. We've got to lift it again. Oh. That's well off the edge, man. How did you do that? That was teamwork. That was a that was joint effort. So this looks very strange now that the anvil is in place. It does not at all look proportional. It looks like the power hammer for it should be, you know, like this big, a just monstrous thing. But in fact. I've measured it. Not once, not twice. I've actually measured it zero times. Jamie measured it. No, don't be chucking me under the bus <laughs> like that if it's wrong, right? You've double checked it all. I double checked it. Well, I checked it once after Jamie had already measured it. And indeed, this is the length of the power hammer and it's gonna look really, really strange. Um, but hopefully it all checks out and it works. Now these pipes right here, 
are to support the actual machine itself. But what we also want to consider is hopefully not having the anvil move around freely. We don't want it jiggling around. How are we going to achieve that? I don't know. This traditionally would have had a hole that's filled with concrete, anvils dropped into the hole, and then probably some oak wedges are driven in to make sure it stays in the right place. So here are our three options as I see them. We've got expanding foam, 4,000 PSI compressive strength, wood, and then concrete at 20. I'm a little unsure about this, and since we can neither get expanding foam or concrete because there's a fuel shortage going on in the UK right now. We are going to go and be even Stephen with our middle choice, wood. Good morning. I'm looking at my handiwork from yesterday and I'm realizing I think I messed it up. It's not very handy then. It's not very handy. I correctly positioned these so they wouldn't interfere with the bolt holes of the top plate, but not the back ones. Gosh, the struggles I make for myself by being so utterly, ridiculously stupid. I'm literally a blithering buffoon. <laughs> oh, Lee, that's a strong world! Oh, I thought brute force was the answer! Ah, ah! Righty ho, let's do a test assembly. We put the plate down to make sure there were no holes in the way of anything and it all fits up nicely so we can pull it back off and finish welding up the bottom. I've welded the pipes to the bottom base and what I now want to do in order to deaden the sound that this makes. <laughs> as far as you can deaden the sound of a power hammer. But at least in order to control some of the noise and add some more weight to the base, we're going to fill these up with sand. And I fortunately actually went to the beach just the other day. The idea with these is in addition to wooden wedging, we're going to weld these bars to the plate so that there's an actual kind of mechanical obstruction to the anvil moving. And I would just love to take an opportunity to say, this whole plan could very well not work. And I have a contingency plan for that. And we will just simply slide a little bit of plate in, make ourselves a little box, and then fill that cavity with concrete. Hunky dory, happy days, we're fixed. We got ourselves a little issue. So we cut this whopping gigantic big hole out with the plasma torch on this top plate. And I have a feeling it's resulted in this plate taking on quite the hefty warp. Over here, very limited gapage. Over here, very large gapage. Very limited gapage. You see, the ruler all of a sudden has become a seesaw. How does one straighten 15 millimeter plate? You could do it with a lot of force, or maybe we could use a little bit of heat. Flame straightening provides a major benefit to production. That, of course, means the right equipment in the hands of qualified personnel. Ah, it said something about qualified personnel. Well, I don't need to hear any more. I think we've learned what we need. Let's give this a go. Part of this whole process is it relies on the cooling down of the metal, and I don't know how long it takes for you to see that it's worked. Presumably the metal needs to be nearly cold. So far at least, nothing has happened. Although we do have cool tiger stripes on our power hammer base. Flame straightening is absolutely a thing, and it's absolutely awesome, and I'm in fact so good and so qualified at flame straightening that I flame straightened so much I damn well bent it the other way. So with the plate now straight, we get to make it unstraight by welding on the underneath. What we've got to do is we've got to get this welded up from the underneath, crawling into here, upside down, getting weld bead in my ears, and in just a few moments, the base will be done. All 
right, the base is done, but we still got a little bit of work to do on the power hammer stand, like create a motor mount, put the actual power hammer on it, and see if it doesn't fall apart. And I'd love to see you then. For now, let's thank our sponsor. This episode has been sponsored by Squarespace, which is a website building platform that I was using long before Squarespace ever became a sponsor of the channel. I couldn't afford a website designer, but by goodness, did I have the gumption to try and work out how to build my own. And I didn't even need half that gumption because with Squarespace's drag and drop templates, the plethora of beautiful themes to choose from, and their award-winning 24-7 customer support, I was able to build myself an awesome website. And Squarespace's offering keeps getting better and better and better. You now have email marketing tools, members-only areas where your dedicated fans can pay to access exclusive content. You can use their scheduling feature to book out consultations. And they've just launched the all-new Squarespace Video Maker that helps you create beautifully branded videos videos to help convert sales on your website. Whether you just want a beautiful place to share your resume for future employers, or whether you want a powerful and beautiful e-commerce website to run your business, you're going to absolutely love having a Squarespace site. So please go to squarespace.com forward slash forge. You'll get a free trial. Try it out. See how easy it is. And if you like it, you'll get 10% off your first purchase using code forge at checkout. Thank you all so much for watching. See you all very soon. Bye-bye.